Give them glory right there. Come on, come on. You got about 33 seconds. Oh, 17 more seconds. It's up to you. What kind of glory do you want this atmosphere to produce in your life? As a deer pants after streams of water, so my soul thirsts for you, oh God. Any thirsty believers in the room today, come on, pant after him like a deer pants for water.
to give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. What a sweet spirit in this place. And since God has already set the atmosphere, it's just appropriate to continue in the flow of what we're doing today with you. If you do nothing else, if you do nothing else today, make sure you give him all the glory. If you do nothing else, if you do nothing else, if you do nothing else, make sure you give him all the glory. Not because, not because anybody else deserves it, because he deserves all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And so since he deserves it, then you ought to give it to him. And, and he shouldn't have to do anything else to get it. When somebody deserves something, you bring it to them because they've already done the work to earn it. Has God earned your worship? Has God earned your praise? Hallelujah. We give him all the glory, honor, and praise. I want you to help me. Uh, today is a special day. My, my oldest sister, uh, her birthday is today. And so I want you to help me to praise God for my sister Danielle. Happy birthday to you. And I don't, I don't know, where's Lawrence at? Is Lawrence, he was backstage with me. Come here, this is, everywhere I go, this young man is making sure that everything is all right. This is Lawrence Ross, y'all praise God for him. This is his birthday as well. And I want you to thank his wife because sometimes it takes us hours to leave and she stands there patiently. She don't move, she don't complain. Thank you for loaning him to us. He is one of the greatest servants that this church has. Praise God for the Ross family. We love you and we appreciate you. So this is the month of promotion. Touch somebody who look like they ain't jealous and say it's going down this month. It's going down this month. I'm about to open my business. I'm about to listen, listen, hold on. I'm about to fire my boss. Some of y'all missed that. You missed it, I'm gonna say it again because some of y'all weren't listening. Say, this is the month where I fire my boss. I'm tired of my boss firing me, I'm firing them because I'm about to start something that God put in my spirit and I might hire my boss if they looking for a job. Y'all ain't got that kind of faith. That part, they ain't, they ain't got that kind of faith. You may not be able to see yourself there yet, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't respond as if it isn't your reality. You don't wait until the battle is over to declare a thing, you shout now. So, so you don't wait until your bills are paid to say thank you, Lord. You wait until all the bills, the slips turn colors and you thank God anyway that somehow, some way he's gonna do something amazing and miraculous in your life. If you believe the report of the Lord, say, I believe. I'm gonna reserve myself today because I gotta give you, uh, I don't wanna give you a shout, I wanna give you a tool. If we shout, we shout. You can do that on your own. We've done enough of that already today and if we do it again, we do, but certain boardrooms and, and rooms you go in, you gotta know how to act when you get in there, okay? Hey, this, this, two, two days ago, I was uh, at a country club playing golf called the Wilshire Company Club. It's in, it's in, it's in uh, right outside of Sherman Oaks in California. I'm, I'm looking um, what the guy I was with and I'm just talking to him. Somebody connected us. It was our first time ever meeting. Anybody <laughs> on a golf course, you can meet somebody two minutes ago and y'all can act like you've been knowing each other your whole life. So we were having a business meeting and I'm talking to him and he's asking me all these questions. And let me tell you something, anybody who asks you the right questions, pay attention to because people who have been successful, they don't have answers initially, they have questions. They wanna make sure they're around the right people. And I start talking to this gentleman and all that kind of stuff. I get to the end of the round of golf and he says, yeah, uh, my family and I, we just sold tw uh, 20 McDonald's for 70 million. I said, yeah, uh, me, me and my family went to McDonald's and we spent $20. And 
the Lord said to me, he said, son, listen, I don't expose you to things for you to just admire it. I expose you because I'm showing you what I'm going to do in your life. Listen, so you'll know the language of the level. I could write a whole book on the language of the level because you can't take old vernacular into new rooms. So we was on that country club and, and I had to learn. I was walking around. I didn't know what a restroom was. I didn't know um, uh, who, who, who the caddies were. I didn't know any of that. But what I did, what I did listen, I stayed one step behind somebody who knew. I didn't get ahead of him, but I didn't get too far back from him because I belonged even though I wasn't a member. <laughs> I didn't pay a greens fee. I didn't pay to get in. But when you have the right relationships, God will have somebody open the door for you. When you have the right relationships, God will open the door for you and you can be promoted without paying. So I walked around the room, ran into an athlete who had just signed a $500 million contract. And I, and I walk up to him and I said, you know, cause I'm, I'm smooth, you know, so I, I wanted, I wasn't gonna act like I was that happy to see him, but I was like, what up? He was like, man, I watched your sermon last week. <laughs> I said, I watched you sign a contract last month. <laughs> and you signing the contract was as inspiring to me as you watching the word that God had given me to be inspiring to you. We exchanged numbers, started texting, started praying for his family and his wife. And then he said to me, he said, oh, by the way, we're moving to Houston. He said, when we move to Houston, we already know what church we're going to. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. But see, when I went to that country club, I had to dress, I had to dress right. I had to, I, I'm just telling you, don't, don't let nobody make you think you can always show up as you. You're gonna have to make some adjustments. Tell your neighbor, smooth some of them edges out. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna get this promotion. You can't be ghetto at the country club, amen. It's a word. Now, y'all laughing at me, but it is a word. You can't show up in jogger pants talking about God made me the way I am. Yeah, we'll stay over there at the free course, the public course. But if you're going over here. So all month, I'm going to be talking to you about promotion. And I want you to get ready mentally for what God is going to do financially, spiritually, emotionally. Somebody shout, at least if you believe it, I'm about to blow up. I'm just looking for people who, I'm looking in your face to see if you believe it. Cause see, some of y'all think somebody else gonna blow up. I'm talking about you, say, I, I'm, I'm about to blow up. I'm about to buy the house this time. I'm buying the car. I'm paying for my kids to go to college. I'm about to take care of my mama. I'm gonna be a faithful giver and a tither. I'm about to be debt free. I'm about to have a brand with my name on it. Y'all gonna be buying from my shop, my store. I'm about, somebody said, I'm about to do it. I'm about to have an invention. I'm about to change the world. It's me. If you believe it, say it's me. I'm about to pass the bar exam. I want you to go to Daniel, Daniel chapter two verse 46 Daniel chapter 2 verse 46 the Bible says then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him 
The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods. <laughs> and a, I don't like his language, we're going to fix it, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets. You're getting close. You're not quite there, but you're further than you used to be. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him a ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of all the governors over all the wise men in Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and see this is, this is probably the most important part about promotion that most people forget? He said, uh, I appreciate what you did for me, but I got a couple of homies. And if it's all the same to you, whatever you gave me, can you hook them up too? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, before this service is over, I'm going to pray and ask God to bless both of us. Now, if your little nasty, hating neighbor ain't say nothing to you, I would move. I would not spend the rest of this service sitting next to nobody who wouldn't speak into my life. And I am not playing. We got like one seat here. The whole place, I got, one, I got two seats. If you sit next to somebody who didn't say nothing, I would sit Indian style in the floor. I'm going to give you another chance, because one can chase a 1,000. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Daniel said, I'm about to go to the next level, but if it's all the same to you, can you help the three dudes that came here with me to go up? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is my prayer that by the time this service is over, we both got something to shout about. Give him a high five. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So if I was given this sermon a subject, I would call it the unusual suspect. Subtitle, God is getting ready to take you from the unseen to the unsuspected. He's going to take you from the unseen to the unusual. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a phrase that we use in, in, in culture, um, and it's, it's an old phrase. They even made a movie about it about 30 years ago called The Usual Suspects. And whenever you hear the terminology that somebody is the usual suspect, it simply means that whenever an action or a thing takes place, without much thought, you already know who's culpable, right? So every parent in here, if you got more than one child, if something in your house get broke, you about know who did it. You know the one that, that, that's meticulous and is afraid of you, and you know that other joker don't care nothing about nothing unless they scared to death. How many of y'all got, you, you, know, you, know, you know Cain and you know Abel? One of your children, they're going to go to school and uh, the teacher's going to give them a good report and say, oh, they're amazing and, and, and they, they pay attention to their work. They eat their Brussels sprouts and, and, and they drink their orange juice. And then you got another one when they call you and be like, if you don't come and get Daniel, <laughs> Daniel up here, uh, he don't listen to nobody. He's skipping class. And then when you catch him talking, he say it wasn't him because you already know who the usual suspect is. Some of y'all ain't laughing because you are the one. They just can't get it right. You know, and, and in culture, I remember and see these usual suspect ideas, they're usually uh, shrouded in uh, suspicions um, without expression. I, I will even tell you myself, 
Um, and, and there is a difference between these two words, and I'm gonna say prejudices, not racism, but prejudices. It's when you put uh, an unfair uh, a thought process on, on, on an individual without due process. You see, everybody isn't racist, but all people are prejudiced. All, all, everybody has prejudices, and I know you like to think that you don't, but you have prejudices. You can look at, a, uh, if you're walking down the street at night and you see a tall, six foot four black man, about 235 pounds, with dreadlocks and a, and a bandana on and a wife beater <clears throat> and his pants hanging off his butt, I don't care how pro-black you are, if you see him, you crossing the street. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, somebody. And you can talk about everybody else. They racial profiling, but don't nobody racial profile like black people. Oh, y'all ain't got to say, man, but you can say out. Y'all see, we see certain people. You can see a young lady with pink hair, and you automatically think she ghetto, and you be like, look at it. It's all to be a shame, and she might own her own company, and your hair jet black, and you work for somebody. Because <laughs> we, all, we all have prejudices. Now, I'm telling tell you, one of the times I remember having one, y'all remember in D.C. when the snipers uh, were, were, were killing people? I'm not, now, please, Lord, forgive me, but when they said that people were being killed in D.C. Uh, by a sniper, I said, man, what white man in his middle age life is out here shooting people. It was a prejudice that I automatically assumed statistically backed up that most serial killers are middle-aged white men. And so my prejudice made me assume they already knew who the usual suspect was to my surprise. That we found out that it was a black man in a cutlass Oh, y'all don't remember them cutlets on them Dayton's and them spinners. They just spinning and spinning and spinning. It was a black man in a cutlass with a keyhole knocked out of a trunk with the ability to shoot people from a distance. That ain't something we know how to do. But he did it because he was an unusual suspect. And the reason why they couldn't find him is because they were looking for the usual suspect. They were going all around the world with their profiling. It was a white male, middle age, probably bullied, probably from rural America, somewhere in some city. You know, they took their profile, and, and the profile of the usual suspect had them looking in the wrong direction. And they couldn't find him because he was doing something unusual. See, the reason why the devil keeps finding you is you do what you usually do. You are where you usually are. You say what you usually say. But this is the season for you to get him off the scent. Get him off track. Find something else to do. Find a new language. Find a new way of thinking. Find a new concentric circle of friends and throw the devil off the trail because in this next month, over the next few weeks, I'm going to talk to you about doing things unusual. Doing things that nobody in your family has ever done before. Speaking in ways in which nobody in your family has ever spoke before. I want you to get a notebook and I just want you to just start writing unusual stuff. I'm gonna have $40 million by the end of the year. Some of you won't do it, you know why? Because the only thing you have the courage to document is what you believe. This won't be for everybody in the room. I'm talking about promotion. I'm looking for one to 3% of you all in this room and one to 3% of you online to shock the future with what's about to happen in your life. And what I'm talking about is not some pie in the sky that you're going to get 45 years from now. I'm not talking about the hope of glory for 10 years from now. I'm talking about by the time July get here. <laughs> By the time my kids go back to school, 
I won't have to drop them off on the way to work. I'll be at home already at work with an LLC in my name, producing the same kind of income from home that I was when I was working 50 hours a week, driving in traffic trying to get there. I'm going to do it from a computer on my kitchen table. Who I'm talking to in this room today? Somebody say unusual. Unusual. I'm going to do unusual things. I'm going to do unusual things in my life. Uh, and, so, and so I put that out there for you to look at it because we always talk about Daniel as this guy who got out of the lion's den and, and this prophet of sorts who was able to speak to the king. And I'm going to tell you his story. But can I just tell you his background? Uh, from what he just went through, he, he wasn't supposed to be here. Because there was an evil king named Nebuchadnezzar who had made up a province in a place called Babylon. Everybody say Babylon. Are y'all all right for me to teach you this week? So there's a place called Babylon. Well, Nebuchadnezzar was kind of like a dictator. He was an evil king in a place called Babylon. Now, let me tell you why this is important. Because Babylon in antiquity is the same landmass and area called Iraq. Okay. So Iraq, where you remember there was an evil dictator, when we were looking for weapons of mass destruction, they wasn't there, but we were looking for them there, and there was a dictator there by the name of Saddam Hussein. All of that power, all of that authority, all of that military might, and we found him hiding in a hole. Palaces all over the area, and they found him crouched, rich, powerful, in a hole. <laughs> the keys to a military with tanks and jets, but they found him in a hole. Are you listening to me? That's where this place of this story has taken place, and this is the same place in one chapter, you will see a golden image that has been erected, and it is said that if you do not bow to this golden image, one chapter, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. And who was thrown into that fiery furnace? Three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The same three men that Daniel said if you bless me, you got to bless them. Now, let me tell you why I'm telling you this. Because what if the fire is the promotion? All right, I can tell this sermon ain't going to be good. Because when Pastor Philip was up here talking about promotion, all you saw was your car get more expensive. And all you saw was another zero on your check. And all you saw was another furniture set from Ashley. <laughs> I know, I know, I, you saw your walk-in closet. Come on, dream with me. You, and ain't nothing wrong with it. Can we dream right now? You saw your walk-in closet. It is so big in your closet right now that this is how you're walking around it. And this is just your shirt section. You just got into your Birkin section. This is what you saw. You saw the house, you saw the cars, but I bet you nobody saw the fire. I bet you nobody saw the lion's den. I bet you nobody saw friends you thought you could trust flaking. I bet you nobody saw a pink slip. I bet you nobody saw a future crumbling because David said it was good that I was afflicted. And sometimes, like a bow and arrow, in order for God to take you forward. <laughs> he has to take you back. And sometimes promotion, listen, is losing your current status. This is why I'm, <laughs> so I'm going to take my time. Because you never saw yourself at the funeral of someone you loved. 
and that being the thing that sparks something in you to say that I must do better. You didn't see the deal falling apart. You didn't see it, and so it is my opportunity, my observation, and my job to tell you that promotion is a multifaceted exercise and that we do not go from mountaintop to mountaintop in this life. In order to get from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop, you must go down into the valley. Anybody still want a promotion? We are entering into a text, follow me, because I'm gonna give you this whole story that I'm not sure that a lot of us are familiar with how Daniel got to notoriety. Daniel was taken captive as a slave by a man named Nebuchadnezzar because he, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and a bunch of other Hebrews had a relationship with God. Listen to me. Nebuchadnezzar brought them into his province because he thought that if he could capture some of God's people, he could get some of God's glory. Do you know that some people have you around them? Not because they love you, but because they see favor on your life and they think by having you around them that the favor that is on your life will somehow find its way into their life. But you must understand in Scripture, you can't borrow my relationship with God. I tell your neighbor, I'll praise God with you, but you can't borrow my praise. The reason why you can't borrow my praise is because you didn't borrow my pain. You wasn't with me when I was crying. You wasn't with me when I was contemplating suicide. You wasn't with me when I was spending $125 an hour on therapy. So the praise, the relationship, the glory is mine, but I will go to the throne of grace with you. You can't get to heaven because I'm going. God ain't gonna, he's not gonna bless your house just because you next to me. He brought him in because of the relationship that he had with God and he thought that by having him, them in his life, it would change his life. I'm just telling you to be careful that everybody who ingratiates you into their life doesn't have you there because they believe in your abilities. They don't have you there because they think you love them or they love you. They have you there because they think they will benefit from the glory that's on your life. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. And you can always tell because when you need them, they're not there for you. <laughs> and if you ever decide to not be there for them, then they're gonna say something like, oh, you acting funny. <laughs> or you, you think you better than us, or you ain't the same like you used to be. Uh, when you ain't had nothing, you was a lot more nice, but now you funny acting. Let me translate. Can you help me? Translation, let me manipulate you into feeling bad about your success so you'll give me what I'm not willing to work for. And that's why Nebuchadnezzar invited Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, and Belshazzar, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into his life. He falls asleep and he has a dream. Y'all good? I'm telling you this story because this is, this is one of those stories. Everybody gets to the fiery furnace. Everybody gets to the lion's den. I got to tell you how they got there. Are y'all good with that? They were taken as slaves. And in that time, they didn't have the written word like we have it, so God spoke to them in dreams. And Nebuchadnezzar fell asleep and had a dream. And he wanted Daniel, or the Hebrew boy, since they knew God, to interpret the dreams. 
But God didn't give them the power to do it at first, so Nebuchadnezzar hired a whole team of people whose job it was to do nothing more than interpret what he saw. Now let me tell you how hard that is. Some of y'all had a dream yesterday and you don't even remember what you dreamed about. Have you ever had a dream you're like, I don't know where we was at, we were somewhere, and I don't know who was there, but we were somewhere, but I was falling. Have you ever woke up in pain in a dream like, Jesus, did somebody hit me when I was asleep? He, he, he had a dream. And the people he hired, the usual suspects, couldn't interpret this one. And he really realized, and if some of y'all, if you really, if you really look at your friendships, this is what the king said in verse 9. He says, I don't even want y'all to interpret this one because y'all been lying to me the whole time. If, if you really settle down and start looking at the people you trust, you find out that not all the people you trust are trust. He was just comfortable. And he says, y'all been lying to me? And he said, because y'all been lying to me, I'm about to kill everybody. You ever seen white men can't jump? He said, I'm going to my car. I'm going to get my gun. He said, I'm, I'm tired of everybody. He says, I'm trying to get this dream interpreted, and y'all can't interpret it. He says, kill everybody. He said, kill them all. Destroy all of the wise men of Babylon. Do away with them all. Daniel said, hey, bro. Uh, why everybody got to die? <laughs> he said, we ain't done nothing wrong. Why everybody got to die? He said, I'll tell you what. If you just let me talk to God, I'm sure we can work this thing out. I'm paraphrasing. If I just go to God, I'm sure I can talk to him and he'll talk to me and we can get this thing worked out. Now, watch this. In any other instance where Nebuchadnezzar got his dream revealed, he had to tell them what he dreamed about and they interpreted it. This time he says, I'm not even going to tell you what I dreamed about. And somebody better tell me what I dreamed about without me telling them what I dreamed about or everybody's going to be a dream. Are y'all following me? How many of y'all didn't know this part of the story? Raise your hand. See, this is why I'm going through this background. So, so th now you're about to find out how they ended up there. So Daniel goes to God and says, Lord, you got to do something. Because he's about to kill everybody. And then he goes to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and says, I'm about to stick my neck out on the line for us. Watch this. Y'all pray for me. And the Bible says that they went to God and they prayed for him. Now do you see why he took care of them in the end? Because he prayed with them in the beginning. Can I tell you to be leery of people who you promote in your life who don't pray? In your life? Oh, God. Most of us are promoting people for the wrong credentials. You're promoting people because they were there. Some of y'all need to promote your prayer warriors. S stop always promoting the pretty people in your life and the rich people. Where, you need to get some people in your life. They may not have money. They may not have fame, but they know how to get down on their knees and call a Holy Ghost revival and something happens in your life. Stop asking people, can we date? And ask them, can we pray? Ask your neighbor, will you be my prayer warrior? You looking for a husband, you need a prayer warrior. You looking for a wife, you need a prayer warrior. You looking for a significant other, you need a prayer warrior. Then he said, y'all pray with me. They prayed and he promoted them. I want you to start to promote the prayers in your life. I'm t I'm, what I just gave you is so valuable but most people will miss it because most people are too intimidated to pray 
in public places because you feel like you got to sound like a theologian. It don't matter. All you got to do is say, what did, what did Peter say when he was drowning? He didn't have a, a philosophy. Uh, he didn't have a benediction. He didn't have any fancy words. The man started to drown, and he simply said, Lord, save me. Because when you're in trouble, you don't have time to string together multisyllabic expressions. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm in trouble. I need your help. Ask your neighbor, will you pray with me? I'm giving you sound doctrine. You need to employ more prayer warriors in your life because the way the devil is going to come after you, after you get the promotion, you're going to need somebody who knows how to steal away, who knows how to fast and get some anointing and some oil and, and get in a room and be praying for you while you out there trying to kill the giants. You need somebody in the closet praying while you are in the boardroom. You're gonna need somebody praying while you are opening the company. You need a prayer warrior in your life. Ask God to send you somebody in your life who will pray for you. I'm telling you what I know. And we start with the blessing in mind, not knowing you're going to need a foundation of prayer before you get there. What was one of the first things the disciples asked Jesus before they started performing miracles? Lord, teach us how. Watch this. He says, not only teach us how to pray, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples. You better learn how to pray. At church, we tell us how, we, we, we pray, give them a high five. We, we talk worship, but we don't talk prayer. And the Bible says that my house shall be called of all nations, not the house of praise, not the house of miracles, but the house of prayer. And look at how quiet we are when we talk about prayer. Y'all didn't break up because y'all had a misunderstanding. Y'all broke up because y'all didn't know how to pray. No, no, no. You can ask anybody in here who's been married 30, 40, 50 years. They're not together because they liked each other every moment of the day. They're together because when they didn't like each other, they went to somebody who loved them both and said, God, do something in both of us. Oh, Y'all ain't got to say, man, I know what I'm talking about. But see, we live in this generation where we don't want to have to work through and fight through. But sometimes you're going to have to pray, Lord, hold my mule. Lord, do something with my mind. Lord, I'm sick of my own mess. Can I just get about 100 people who will be honest that you're sick of your own mess? I know you're sick of everybody else stuff, but have you ever got tired of you? Give yourself a high five and say, I'm sick of you. That's a neighbor you need to talk to. The king ran out of patience and he said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I pay too much money not to be getting what I'm paying for. If one of y'all don't tell me what I dreamed about last night, I'm killing everybody. I used to be mad when my mom would say, who did it? And didn't nobody say nothing. She'd be like, all right, all y'all. <laughs> and listen, the way our siblings was, you better not tell on nobody. Because when mama ain't looking, everybody get you. <laughs> she said, all right, everybody lined up. God said, I'm going I'm to I'm take care of the king said, I'm gonna take care of everybody. And, and then and Daniel said, all right, okay, all right, all right, let me, let me, let me go to the, to the Lord. Let me see if it pleases the king. Let me see if I can figure this out. And in an instant, let me tell you, it didn't even take long. In an instant, Lord, help me, Jesus. In an instant, you see a Hebrew slave be promoted from a prisoner to a prophet. I'm gonna say it again. There was no orientation period. There was, there was no sitting before the board of directors. When it was his season, watch this, and the moment matched his gift. 
and the gift was in him before the moment. But God is going to make sure that the gift is used at its appointed time. And when the appointed time came, all of a sudden, he went from shackles to profit. I'm speaking to 22 people. That it is not going to take years, it's not going to take months, it's not going to take weeks. In the course of a few hours, there is a promotion that is coming because the moment that God has is about to match the skill set that he gave you. And everything that you didn't understand about yourself is about to make sense. Let me just find, a, I told you it was only for 1%. How many people in this room have certain things about yourself? You keep asking, why do I do that? Why am I nice to people even when they're not nice to me? Why am I so forgiving? Why do I have so much grace? It's because there's an opportunity that's coming. That's looking for somebody who's made just like you. Slap somebody and say, this is my time. You missing it. I'm looking for people. How many of you got things that you just don't understand? Why can't I hate people? Why can't I be a hater? Why am I long suffering? Why do I give grace to people who don't give me grace? Why do I forgive people who keep lying to me? Why do I keep turning the other cheek? Because there's a situation and a moment that's coming that's looking for a long suffering cheek turning saint. Slap somebody and say, my season is here. My moment is here. My time is here. I was made for this moment. Why do I keep making people a priority that make me an option? Why do I keep chasing people who won't even look for me? It's because the moment that's coming is looking for somebody who will chase people who ain't looking for them. And I'm telling you, all of the things that you don't like about yourself is about to fit. And it's about, it's about to make sense. And then you're going to look like, oh. I didn't know that I had to go through that to get to that. I didn't know that cooking every day for somebody who wouldn't even... <laughs> I didn't know that wiping the behind of some child that was going to grow up and be ungrateful was going to turn into... I didn't know that working in ministry without ever being appreciated was going to turn into. I didn't know that looking like a fool was going to turn into. Watch this. Here's the word of the Lord. God says, I'm about to give you beauty. <laughs> I told us only for 3%. I'm about to give you beauty for ashes. God says, I'm about to exchange your trauma for a testimony. In a moment, you're going to go from a prisoner to a prophet. If everybody in this room believes that this is the moment for promotion in your life, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to give God glory in advance. Three people say promotion, 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 promotion. Promotion on my job, promotion in my company, promotion in my mindset, promotion with my finances, promotion in my friend circle. God, get all these dummies out of my circle. Get all of these haters out of my circle. Get all of these envious people out of my circle. Surround me with some prayer warriors. I don't know what you're facing but you have a pre-designed skill set for the moment you're about to walk into.
Listen to me. I know you don't like yourself. And yes, you should continue to work on yourself. But there is a king somewhere who needs your gift. There is somebody with an opportunity who needs somebody who knows how to do what... Listen to me. Not just what you can do, but only what only you can do. Because remember, he already had a staff of people who could do what Daniel could do. They just couldn't do it like Daniel could do it. They needed information. Daniel was like, you ain't got to tell me nothing. Let me go talk to my daddy. And the moment you realize you ain't like nobody else, They can interpret dreams, but they need the dreamer to tell them what the dream was about. The small difference between you is you so connected to God, you don't need information. All you need is anointing. Everybody repeat after me. I'm different. Are you, tell somebody, I'm different out here, cuz. I'm different out here. I'm different. I'm different. I don't see nothing the same. I'm different. I used to think I was weird, but I'm different. I used to think I was cursed, but I'm different. I, I used to think that I was weird and, and, and I, was, I was different and, and, and I was the least, but I'm different. I'm different. And I'm okay with it. Nisha, I'm different and I'm okay with it. My child is different and I'm okay with it. My relationships are different, and I'm okay with it. I see the world differently, and I'm okay with it. Stop trying to fit in with people who don't recognize your difference. Everybody shout, I'm different. Then you said, Lord, please, 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 please don't let me down. I'm about to go out here on a limb. I'm about to go out here on a limb. I'm about to, I'm about to show up to not your typical and start prophesying. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what this is going to look like. I'm going out here. I'm going out here and I'm, I'm trusting you. See, sometimes you just got to go out there. <laughs> Some of y'all playing it too safe. You just going to have to. How many of y'all guilty of just playing it safe all the time? Just, oh, I'm going to get A done, then I'm going to get B done. And then I'm going to get B, then I'm going to get C. And the Lord going to provide. And I'm going to go to C to D. And there's about 1% of y'all here. So, you know, I'm going from A to Z. I don't care nothing about all that stuff in the middle. The Lord going to take care. He Alpha and Omega. I'm going all the way. I'm not going to get my wealth by getting a dollar and 15 cent more per hour. I'm about to go from making what I'm making to making what I thought about and dreamed about, and that's just the way it's gonna be, and people gonna say I'm acting funny, and yes, I am acting funny, and yes, I am moving, because I can't stay around people whose mindsets are gonna keep me stuck in where I came from. Now, if you wanna go where I'm going, let's go, but I'm not staying where I am to make you happy with me. Let's pray. Lord, help me to see the dream of the king. And he started bitten. Boom. I saw this. I saw that. You saw this. You saw that. This is what you said. This is what you felt. He started to explain the man's dream to him, and the man didn't even tell him the subject matter of the dream. And the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar fell to his face and laid prostrate. Please don't say prostate. He was prostate before the Lord. No, he was prostrate. You know, Christians will leave at least four letters out of every word. <laughs> it's, 
I wish I could illustrate it to you, but I want to bend my shoes. He was, just imagine this is the floor. <laughs> Y'all know how we act when we get new shoes, you don't want to... He lays out. Prostrate. <laughs> Before Daniel. <laughs> and Daniel witnesses something unusual. When have you ever seen a king worship a slave? Oh, this is an unusual. Listen, first of all, normally you see the slaves worshiping the king. When have you ever saw an evil king? Worshiping a slave. Oh, God, help me in this place. And he falls on his face and he begins to worship him. And let me tell you why Daniel was blessed of God. Because somewhere in our text, he goes from worshiping Daniel. Read it in verse 46, 47, 48. He starts off by saying he praises Daniel. Somewhere in there he says, he starts to praise Daniel's God. Why do we initially see him worshiping Daniel? And all of a sudden, now we see him worshiping God. I believe through the context of the text, Somehow, some way, Daniel must have said, All the glory belongs. This ain't got nothing to do with me. He gave me the ability. See, the reason why some of us can't be promoted is because we would accept the praise. Daniel rejected it, said, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want any glory. I don't want anything that belongs. Are y'all listening to me? He said, I don't want anything that belongs to me. Listen, he says, I will accept the prizes. I will accept the position, but I will not accept the praise. I will take what's mine, but I do not want what's his. If God is going to promote you, you have to know the difference between appreciation and praise. No, this, I'm going to settle here. Because if you are starving for glory, you won't reach your goals. Daniel says, I am perfectly fine with interpreting your dreams and you giving God the credit. One of the things that is tearing our society down is idolatry. Human worship. I am your pastor. I pray so that I can preach to you. I study hours and hours to make sure that what I give you is from heaven. I may lay hands on you and you may be healed through the power of the Holy Ghost. But please, don't worship me. Please. 
I wouldn't die for you if I was given the chance to. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He is the one that rose up on the third day morning with all power. And the Holy Spirit is your helper and your comforter. We've got to learn to get out of human worship and give the glory back to God. You can thank God for the man that he used, but when it's time to give glory, you give it to the God who made the man. Can somebody in this place just practice it for the next 30 seconds and give God the glory? This is the reason Satan was kicked out of heaven. Is because when the glory came in his direction, he did not redirect it to the one it was supposed to go to. Don't let anybody worship you because anybody who worships you will also look for perfection from you. And will lose their witness when you let them down. Daniel said, yes, God used me, but just because he used me doesn't mean I'm God. And you have to resist the devil's temptation to make you feel like you are God when he uses you. There are more people in the earth who have a God complex than we'd like to admit because when people don't worship us, we don't know how to be faithful. All the glory belongs to him. We need to teach this in every church around the world. No human Worship. Daniel said, I will take the money, but you give him the glory. And if you get confused about that, please know I don't want it. It's, it, it was like when Pastor Philip was talking, I get, I get uncomfortable. I, I get uncomfortable. Yes, it's good. You should. The Bible says that the man of God is worthy of double honor. The Bible says that he's worthy of his hire. I, I get all of that kind of stuff. Give and it shall be given unto you. I get all of that. What does it profit a man but to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? That's the other side of it. So, so after you finish thanking God for me, then thank God, period. Because I can't heal you unless he gives me the power. I'm not the one that was crucified for your soul. I didn't shed one ounce of blood for you to be saved. And I definitely don't have a Holy Spirit that I left to comfort you and to be with you. It was him and him alone. And for that, he deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I thought that was worth saying. And I know it may have been boring for some of you all, and maybe you didn't need to hear it. I thought it was worth saying, and not just in my direction, in yours too. Don't require people to worship you. Don't require people to worship you for you to be happy in your house. Don't require people to worship you for you to have a smile on your face. Don't require people to worship with you to put your attitude behind you. Don't require, see some of us require people to worship us so that they can get the best of us. But that makes you God. And the thing about God is he's good even if you're not. thought it was worth saying that when Daniel was praised by the man, he said, you need to point that praise in another direction. Some people are only comfortable in relationships where they're worshiped. Come here, come here. You keep talking about, I can't find nobody because you can't find nobody to worship you. 
You ain't single because it ain't no good men. You just can't find a good worshiper. I'm gonna stay right, yeah, I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna stay right here. You, it ain't no good men in the earth. There's a whole lot of good men in the earth. You just looking for somebody who will worship you and you don't wanna be with anybody who will challenge you and tell you your attitude stink and you need to shut your mouth and sit down sometime. But if somebody, whatever, happy wife, happy life, not all the time. Oh, y'all, come here, come here, let's talk. That's worship. Where, where this statement, happy wife, happy life, and every man has to always make sure that everything is comfortable for you. That's worship. Look at all the women. Don't require people to worship you in order for you to give the best of yourself. Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to give this man, you, you read that word in the scripture, it said oblation. It, it means a meat offering with no blood. Okay. And where did, where did Daniel set up his office? Once he became governor, now watch this, let me just say this, not only did he become governor, he became governor of all of the governors. So this man went from a slave to being the governor of the governors. You, you want to know why they can't stand you? Because they found out that if you ever get the promotion, it ain't going to be equal to them. I'm telling you, the only person in your life who doesn't know that you are anointed to be over the people you follow is you. You have a supernatural anointing on your life where God says, I'm going to make you CEO of CEOs. I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to make you an author. You're going to be a New York Times best. And since the devil knows that you have a supernatural anointing that will make you governor of governors, he keeps you in your insecurity and in your trauma and in your past because it is difficult to be promoted when you're always in pain. So what we never see Daniel do when he gets to promotion, who am I, who am I still preaching to? Because I think I'm losing some of y'all. What we never see Daniel do when he gets to promotion is say, oh, now you see who I am. Oh, now you want to promote a brother. You weren't saying all of that when you had me in hand, because I don't know. Because most people are so engulfed in their trauma that when the promotion comes, they talk about the pain. Uh, Steve, bring this down here. I'm going to preach from the floor because they're playing with me. Y'all adjust these lights. I'm down here. Sit it right there, right there, because they're playing with me. I'm coming down close. Y'all playing with me. Most people can't get the... Imagine somebody enslaves you. Imagine somebody changes your name. Imagine somebody tears your family apart, and then all of a sudden, because you can do something for them, they say, I like you now. You can be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Come on, talk to, I want everybody who I'm talking to, just raise your hand right now. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I got, it's it gonna take me some time to get over this. I, I just can't just jump up because you want me to jump. I just can't. I just can't be ready because you want me ready. It's going to take me, I'm going to have to get over this. It's going to take me some time. You don't see anywhere in the scripture where Daniel needed time to get over what he went through. Because when the moment comes, you better be ready. When the moment comes, you better be ready to go. I'm talking to some of y'all because the reason why your moment keeps passing you is because every time it's your time, you're not ready. 
You've been getting over stuff since stuff started happening. Your trauma has kept you in the basement when your gift was designed for the rooftop. We all have been through stuff. We all have cried tears. We've all been betrayed, but some of us have made it because it is not about what I've been through. It's about what I'm going to. I pressed toward the mark for the prize of the upward call. Slap somebody, say press. Nobody got time to be dating you for nine months hearing about your last relationship. If you're still in it, you should have stayed in it. When I get with you, I want to hear about what we going to do, not what he did. You're going to be single the rest of your life because you're still married to somebody you ain't with. Nobody taking you out to Mastro's to hear about your problems. Work that stuff out in therapy. But when it's your moment, you better be ready. It's called a date, not a therapy session. You working your stuff out with somebody, you asking God to be your husband. He ain't a professional. She ain't a professional. Some of that stuff you got to work out before you go out or stay home. You don't hear Daniel talking about Nebuchadnezzar before I interpret a dream. Can I just tell you how I felt when you did what you did to me? Oh, oh my God. How long will you mourn me? Some of y'all old enough. Yeah, I see that smile in your face. Yeah, I knew you knew about it. Oh my God. That was a real eye roll, too. I mean, I, I felt them touch my ears. Like, ugh, because when I was 12, you're 90. Are you ready for this opportunity or not? Are you going to interpret this dream or not? Do I have to go get somebody else or not? Are you ready? Is you is or is you ain't? This is what's standing in between us and our promotion date. We always getting over something. How much time do it take for you to get over what you've been getting overing? I'm still, I'm still working on it. As long as you've been working on it, if you was a mechanic, you'd be out of business because everybody car would still be in your shop because you're always working on it. Touch your name and say, stop working on it and work it out. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why people do this. It's because some people, sympathy is more important than promotion. They love when people feel sorry for them, but then they get frustrated because they feel sorry for themselves. You're going to have to get to the point where you don't need somebody else's sympathy to feel good about yourself. I don't need your thank you to be kind. I don't need your thank you to be uh, uh, long-suffering. I don't need you to pat me on the back. If all of y'all sat down and didn't say amen, I'm still going to preach like this. Because I don't need your amen to give God glory. He called me to preach, not you. And this is what stands in the way of our promotion, especially as a people. Because black people, we have been through four, five, six, seven hundred years of trauma. That's a guarantee. And it is not easily washed away on, fact, on top of the fact that we went through a slavery transunion, we went through that trauma and that was passed down to your great-great-grandmama, she gave it to your great-grandmama, she gave it to your grandmama, gave it to your mama and your mama gave it to you and so now we live 
in a world where the, the Jim Crow of times past has only been more sophisticated and is now implemented in the same way. So the world is the same. So instead of us waiting on the politicians to change, why don't we just decide as a people that we're not just gonna want people to give us reparations, but we're gonna take what's ours we're going to pull our resources and start talking to one another, get out of this crab in a barrel mentality and start sharing information with one another. Please don't discount the fact that I know it is hard and that I know we have a lot to go over and that as a lot has been done to us and the trauma that has been inflicted on us is difficult, but there is a difference between somebody who recognizes that trauma and wants something for that trauma and somebody who recognizes that trauma and is going to work to take something in the time frame that you've been given on this earth so that you can create a legacy for the gift that is placed in you. Because if one of us did it, all of you can do it. And in the meantime, while the world systems try to hold us back, we're going to ask Ananiah, Azariah, and Mishael to be praying. Because there are some unfair policies, Jerry um, um, Moran, uh, rigging in the, in the, the voting system and gerrymandering and we've got, we've got they, they changing all of the laws and, 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 and you got all kind of stuff that's going on. I know it's hard but that don't mean you get to sit home and cry about it and it doesn't mean you get to turn the news off because you don't know what you don't want to know what's going on and every time you turn the news off so you don't know what's going on and you won't read a newspaper so you don't know what's going on and then you start talking about I don't know what's going on. You know why you don't know what's going on? Because you won't look at where it's happening. Turn the television on, watch all of the stations and, and form at least an opinion and being ignorant is not a solution. Now, I, didn't, I, didn't even, I don't even supposed to be over here. Let me. I'm trying to show you how to interpret the dream. I'm trying to get promoted as a people. And when you find out something, don't be content with just being the king so everybody has to come to you to get it. Let me tell you something, black people. When you get in the real systems, you will understand that the real systems are too big for one king. If we get in the banking system, you'll realize ain't no one bank. If we get into entertainment, you ain't no one production company. There are pillars where we are absent and infrequent, and we have the skill set to be effective and to make change if we do it. Most of y'all will sit next to the person in church all day that you don't know and won't say nothing to them. Only thing you're trying to figure out is they sitting on your dress. It's kind of close in here. Mm. I need bigger seats. Watch this. When uh, Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> changed his worship from Daniel to God, look what he does. He says, all of y'all talking to the same people that he was trying to get to interpret the dream. He said, uh, all of y'all who, who over here with me, y'all start praising God too. Okay. He went from not knowing God, and the Bible says this was in the second year of his reign. He's a new king. So he goes from not knowing God 
to talking about God, to making sure that everybody who worked for him was praising Daniel's God. In other words, he used his authority to ensure that everybody who was around him was praising God too. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You may not put anything in the offering, but you will put something in the atmosphere. Yeah, so you you got to put some authority. You say it again. Say, you, you might not give at offering time, but when I start praising my God, I highly suggest you do it too. Now, just look at them. Say, I highly suggest you don't, you don't, don't play with me. Now, I don't play about my God. I, I ain't the boss of you, but I'm telling you right now, in the next 30 seconds, I'm about to give God all kind of glory. And if you're going to sit by me, you're going to do it too. I want you to look at the person in front of you, behind you, on the left of you, and on the right of you, and tell them over the next 30 seconds, I promise you, you're going to say something. No, if, if they didn't, I want you, if you're standing up and they sit down, just kind of lean over and say, did you hear what I said? Over the next 30 seconds, we're about to blow this place up because I highly suggest that you give my God. I can't hear nothing. That's weak. That's weak. You're going to have to praise him on the level I praise him. You're going to have to praise him on the level I praise him. Because God's about to do something in this room. And I'm not about to have anybody in this room who won't put something in this atmosphere. I need about 2,000 people to shout glory in this place today. Tell them, neighbor, put it in the atmosphere. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. Grab a neighbor by the hand and shout, neighbor, God's about to use you in an unusual way. If you believe it, then an incredible God deserves incredible praise. Open your mouth and give God Good God Almighty, give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, I speak unusual in your life. Watch this. Listen. I feel the glory. Tristan, Tristan, when I came to church this morning and I got out of the car, what was the first thing you said to me? Do you remember? He said, sir, where's your voice at? because I had lost it. I had no voice when I got here. Nick got me, anybody ever had that, is it medicine? Medicine ball from uh, Starbucks? Because I don't go to Starbucks, they charge too much. But, but he, he had one for me and, and, I, and I was drinking and I'm like, I'm sitting down here, the worship service is going on and I'm like, oh my God, I can't participate. I was like, oh my God, I swear to you, I almost was going to tell Pastor Torrance, half Pastor Suber to preach because he's already in the vein. And then the Lord said, no, it's your time. Now, all of a sudden, here I am talking to you. And just an hour and a half ago, I didn't have a voice. But see, this moment matched my gift. And when it's your time, God will give you what you didn't have. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, I speak. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I speak unusual. I speak uncommon favor. If you believe it, open up your mouth and give your God an unusual praise. Open it up your mouth. Slap three people and say, promotion is here, promotion is here, promotion is here. Slap three more people and say, promotion is here, promotion is here, promotion is here. Promotion in your finances. Promotion in your health. Promotion in your business. 
promotion in your relationship promotion in your ideas here's what God told me to tell you he's about to satisfy you with long life some of y'all are going to live 10 years past your grandmother if you believe it shall he yeah. I'm about to leave y'all alone but I need you to do one more thing remember when Daniel went and received the blessing the Bible says he put his office at the king's gate. The king's gate, remember, enter into his. The king's gates is where judgment and decisions were made. Watch this. So now, Daniel is literally saying that I am about to protect the guy who put me in slavery and in four chapters, it's going to put me in a lion's den. Why is this important? Because promotion dictates that you protect that witch tried to harm you. So I know your daddy didn't raise you, but honor your mother and father that your days might be long. I know he broke your heart and divorced you, but buy him a wedding gift and a card and congratulate him on where he's going because it necessitates that you protect that which harmed you. And if you are not ready to protect that which gave you pain, you are not ready for promotion. I will take no part in destroying you. Remember, oh God, if you just keep reading this book, you're going to find out that Nebuchadnezzar, this rich king, remember, where did we find Saddam Hussein? Keep reading it. In a few chapters, you will find Nebuchadnezzar on the ground eating grass. You ain't got to do nothing to anybody who enslaved you. God has the final. God has the final. From a palace to a pasture, eating grass, because you messed with the wrong people. There is an unusual suspect in this room. You were not supposed to make it. You weren't supposed to be here. You were supposed to be somewhere crawled up in the room crying about the trauma of your history. You were supposed to swallow them all and die in convulsions in your bathroom. The divorce was supposed to kill you. And the absence of your father and mother in your life was supposed to destroy you. And the betrayal of your sibling was supposed to <laughs> put you in a position where you wanted to just die. And you remember that uncle that molested you? That was supposed to kill you too. And that stepfather who touched you inappropriately, but you were afraid to tell your mother because you knew your mother would choose him over you. That was supposed to end you too. And yet, in the year of our Lord, 
2023. Bloodied and bruised from the chains and shackles of life, you are still here. And that's the real testimony. I know it wasn't easy, and I know it wasn't, I know it wasn't a cakewalk, and I know you lost somebody you loved along the way. But you're still here because God needed you in this world for such a time as this and I know you wanted to die but you couldn't because somebody's life depended on your breath do you have the courage to live do you have the courage to interpret the king's dream even when you know he is using you for himself. I promise you there will be promotions that will break out in this room and those of you all who are watching online the praise reports this month are going to be crazy. Tell your neighbor, if you pray for me, I'll put a good word in for you. If you, put a, if you pray for me, I promise you, when I start getting my stuff, I'm going to remember you. If you pray for me, when I get that promotion, I'm gonna, I will remember the conversation we had. I'm, I'm going to find a way to implement your skill set in the dreams that I have for my life. Never forget that the opportunity of a lifetime is only good for the lifetime of the opportunity. And if you are not ready when it is your moment, you will watch somebody else eat your honey and drink your milk. You better be ready. You better be ready when it's your time. You don't have time to get ready. You got to be ready. Now, the old folks used to sing a song and said, I got my ticket in my hand. I got my bags packed. Ask your neighbor, will you be ready? Lift your hands in this place. I want you over the next few moments just to, the Bible lets us know that our worship sends up a fragrance. And out of the sweet, savory place of your belly and your lips, I want you to begin to say something sweet to God. Come on, put something in the atmosphere. Let's create an altar of incense. Ha! 
God. Say, consume me. things really I want to do it in an orderly fashion in a way that respects the moment we're in I believe that the seeds that are going to be sown in this atmosphere are going to yield much fruit for many seasons of your life but I also know God told me that I've got to extend the invitation to Christian discipleship and I also know that we have to pray. The Bible says that man should always pray and never cease. The intersectionality of trying to figure out how to do all of those things in a way where those who are carnal would not take advantage of the moment is the pageantry. So for everybody who's watching online and for everybody in the room, who doesn't have another 10 minutes, leave your gift with one of our ushers and I pronounce you dismissed and the benediction over your life. For the rest of us, I want you to get your gift together right now, get your offering together, because we're gonna leave from the altar. We're gonna leave from the altar. And what I need you all to do right here, ministers, ministers, I need you to make sure that there is a line open here because the people who are going to come to Christ are going to walk right through this space so I need you to make sure that this area here has a walkway can you do that for me pastors thank you thank you how many of you feel the glory of the Lord in this place Somebody saying it, it's the word I want to hear. Somebody say worthy, worthy. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy, that's what I hear. Worthy is the lamb. That's what I hear. cell phone whether you have it in person this is what I'm gonna do let's follow instructions um, deacons come here I want you all to 
spread out in every one of these aisleways, one of you all in every aisleway, because as you come, I want you to put your gift in the basket or tap it with your phone. Those of you online, the instructions are up right now. In moments like this, I'm not even going to tell you to be faithful because if you don't sense the move of God, then releasing the gift won't matter. But everybody who understands this, this is an uncommon moment and that you want to put your best seed in this atmosphere, I'll leave that up to you. I'm a tithe, I'm an offer. My gift was already prepared. My, my gift is already in. Somebody shout, I'm a giver. So on your way up to this altar, and listen, I, I mean this with my, my whole heart. If you feel that you're being manipulated to give, keep it. I mean it with my whole heart heart because our money doesn't keep this thing going God will get it to us a different way if you feel that I'm telling you that this is an uncommon atmosphere and you feel like I don't you just keep it for those of y'all who believe and who are ready for the promotion and the testimonies that are going to come forward I want you to get your gift ready whether it is electronically or whether it is in the physical sense and if you want me to pray for your promotion, I want you to drop that gift off in a receptacle that is near you and I want you to meet me at this altar. And remember, we're keeping this aisle way clear because I've got another instruction. If you have your gift, bring it to the altar. If you wanna pray, bring it to the altar. Lord, bless these gifts and these givers. Let no one go without. Come close, come close, come close. Deacons, if you have to move through the crowd to get closer to people. Nobody pass up. Don't take it home. Hallelujah. If you can't get to a basket, lay it on the altar. Pass it up through somebody. They'll bring it, they'll pass it up here. Deacons, you can move through the people. Go collect it. You can move through the people. Go. Worthy is the Lamb. Deacons, I want you to find these people whose hands are up. Just move through the crowd. Please, if you see somebody with a receptacle, just let them through the off of the aisle. Please. I can't start until these gifts are received, and let me t I'll tell you in a minute why. Deacons, hold the basket up so they can see you. Can somebody help this young lady right here? She, she's got a hand up. I don't want to have her hand up too long. Somebody please help her. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put it on the altar. Thank you. If you can, get it to the altar. Get it to the altar. I'm going to tell you why. This is... So it's all by design. Yes, ma'am. Come. So if somebody can get it from her. Just have her. Somebody help that young lady right there behind me. Just pass it this way. Pastor, I don't even want to touch it.
There's another one behind you. I'm, I'm, I'm modeling in public what I do in private. I don't touch y'all money. It belongs to God. It was the reason I became an entrepreneur to make sure that I didn't need the church to sustain me to be able to live. Hallelujah, somebody. So I'm by vocational on purpose. I have my own businesses. I own my own house. I don't live in the church's house. I don't live in the parsonage. The church don't pay my car note. I do that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the ingenuity and the brain that he gave me to create wealth outside of the church. And that's what I want you to do. You got to find a way to create wealth outside of where you work. I'm telling you, if all I did was pastor, I wouldn't be wealthy. It ain't enough money in it. It's not consistent enough. God brought me a long way. I made my first million dollars when I was 27 years old. 27. Didn't know what to do with it. Didn't have, listen to this, I didn't even have insurance. Jackie, where's Jackie at? I didn't, what, how old was I when I finally realized I needed insurance? Right, 30 something, I was, she was like, you need insurance. I said, oh yeah. Cause you know what I wanted? I was in doctor, yeah, I wanted a Bentley. Stupid, right? I wanted, I wanted clothes and cars and all that kind of stuff. Then I started realizing I was buying all of that stuff to impress people who wasn't looking. I remember the day that the Lord broke that curse on my back, I brought a Jeep Cherokee. And I started driving the Jeep Cherokee to church and people was like, what you doing with a Jeep Cherokee? You, you shouldn't be driving that. No, I wanted to drive it because I was teaching me a lesson. That it didn't matter if the car was $300,000 or whether it was $50,000, I was still me in both of them. And the moment you get to the point where you realize that the stuff outside of you ain't got nothing to do with the stuff that's inside of you, and here you are mortgaging your future to impress people who ain't looking, now, let me tell you why I called you up here. And I have to do this. I know this is not popular because we live in a populist, a society where we're supposed to talk to everybody. And believe me, I got enough love in my heart to talk to everybody. But listen to me, black people. Listen to me. Those of you who are the descendants of slaves like Daniel, have the opportunity to either live in your trauma or tap into your success and all of your slavery didn't come from 400 years ago some of you all slavery came from a year ago five years ago a decade ago from the last relationship you were in some of you all have been in slavery even once slavery was over you understand what I mean by that listen to me you have to make up in your mind that the future is depending on your present. And every day you wake up and don't make this change, the clock is ticking on your opportunity to be what God called you to be. And you're gonna have to interpret this dream you keep having. What does God want you to see? Who does he want you to be? And what is the outcome and legacy you're supposed to leave in the earth? I believe with my whole heart that it is our responsibility to break this curse. This curse of poverty. This curse of wanting handouts with no goals being angry and upset all the time. Our tempers are killing us. Our refusal to learn the king's language has locked us out of the room. And we want to be so culturally adept. But there is one thing to fit in culture. It's another thing for you to change it. And I love, I love our culture. But can we do something else other than a TikTok? Can we do more than twerk? I'm tired of looking on Instagram and us looking stupid. I'm tired 
of our idea of content is a martini glass at a restaurant. When are you going to post what you read? When are you going to post what you learned? Somebody has tricked you into thinking that you can build an empire on your body alone. My question is, when the creatine won't work anymore and you can't fight father time and the wrinkles set in, who are you when you ain't fine no more? This thing, use it. You're only using 10% of it. Everything you've accumulated has been with 90% of your brain shut down. I, I want us to do better. And I am preaching to you like this because I know you can do it. But somebody has to show you the way. I'm going to pray for you today that the scales that the enemy has over your eyes would be removed. And just like all on the road to Damascus you will begin to see the light of what I am saying and at least in Houston Texas at this church the devil will realize that he's losing the victory do you hear what I'm saying to you I don't want to see you on Instagram with money to your ear I don't want to see you on Instagram counting your money in front of your house, fool. They see your address and they coming to get it. Stop sitting on the hood of your car with your license plate number out. Put a suit on. Go to a boardroom before you got a meeting and just post I'm making moves. Even if you ain't got a move to make. Own your home. If you can pay $4,000 in rent, you can buy a house. And I'd rather you have a new Ford than a 15-year-old Benz because you want to floss. Now you're going to spend all of your money getting the car fixed every week to look like you have something you don't have. I'm talking to you like I'm your father. Pay yourself before you pay your bills. Get you a savings account. Learn how to do your own nails in between appointments. Get you some leave-in relaxer. Let them edges down. Just let it work. Get you some silk pillowcases. Get you a bonnet. Because you ain't got time to be spending $800 every week. Now, I know the hairstylist is going to be like, Pastor, you in my money. No, I'm showing you to get you another stream of income so you're not standing on your feet 15 hours a day trying to live. Because anytime you're exchanging dollars for hours, you're poor. Don't just do hair on the place and have nine people doing hair while you go manage your other four shops. That's why I want your mind. Who am I talking to? Shout promotion. Shout promotion. Once again, shout promotion. If you believe that this is the year of manifested promises and you're believing God for a promotion in your life, make some noise in this room. Tell your neighbor, it ain't always going to be like this. Look at somebody tell them, it ain't always going to be like this. 
I'm not always going to be worried about a cell phone bill. I'm not always going to be worried about a car note. I'm not always going to be worried about rent. I'm not always going to be worried about who likes me. I'm walking into a season where I'm getting ready to interpret dreams and people are going to come looking for me. Raise your hand if I'm talking to you. If I'm not, I'm not. I am not in the least in the least and let me say in the least I am not insulted if I'm not talking to you I have never preached a sermon that was for everybody I am not insulted if you think I'm talking crazy and you want to say shut the hell up I do what I want to do I'll take it but come see me in 20 years to find out if I was right come see me in 20 years to find out if I did not give you the gospel today. The strategy you have for yourself is temporary. The one I'm trying to give you, you can pass on to somebody. Because my question for you is, you're beautiful. How can your child benefit from that when you are no longer? You're an influencer. Got it. How can your great-great-grandchild because a wise man leaves an inheritance for his. So how can your children's children benefit from your Instagram page, from your LinkedIn account, from your Twitter feed? I'm giving you something eternal. Now before I pray, if you're in this place today, it may not even be the day for you. You're like, I don't want to join in that atmosphere. That's fine. We'll do it another time. But if you believe that God sent you to this church and you want this kind of teaching, what I am giving you right now, people pay thousands of dollars to get. And I knew what Pastor Philip meant. What he means is, is anytime God puts somebody amongst you that you have access to, you forget the glory that's on their life. I realize, and that's why, that's why God takes me other places. I go other places. He reminds me what he put in me. But I don't come home for you to do it. I come home to put in you what he put in me to put in you. You don't have to worship me. I'm good with it. I'm fine with it. I know who I am. If you're in this place today and you know that if you and I spend a year or two walking and you keep hearing me talk like this and it's going to push you into the next level and you're not connected to this church online or in this place and you feel like you want to be connected to this place right now, just raise your hand. Y'all let them through. Go this way. Go to my right. Let them through. I want you to go this way. Everybody let them through. Let them through. If you feel somebody pushing that behind you, move out of the way. Push through like the woman with the issue of blood. And y'all praise God for them as they go. And the reason why I had it this way is because I wanted you to push through it. I didn't want it to be easy. I wanted you to have to press your way. Look at them moving by the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. Come on and praise God. Matter of fact, do me a favor. Take them over to the Dream Center because it's open. I'll be over there in a second. Take them to the Dream Center. Hallelujah. 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 The devil tried to block that too, but he can't stop nothing. What God has put together, they still going. You still praising. Now you just you do this you look at that person next to you and say don't get common with me don't get common with me I'm somebody I'm different speak to me like I'm different approach me like I'm different pray for my gift like I'm different I don't want no common prayer I need some oil and some fasting because I'm different out here I'm getting ready to do major things and I'm getting exploits anybody getting exploits this is the year of manifested promises. The way the money and the influence is getting ready to pour in, you're going to have to be ready for it. I sense the Holy Spirit saying, what you did to get here is about to shift. He's about to give you a new skill set. You're about to do something to make money that you didn't even know you could do. There's going to be a lot of them. God bless you. They're still coming. They're still coming. 
tell her, tell her you're rich. Tell her, I'm, I'm rich. Just tell her. Guess what she said? I'm rich too. You see how contagious that is? Look, look at her. Look at that lady behind you in the orange and tell her I'm rich. She said, if you're rich, I'm rich. See, it's contagious. Matter of fact, just look at somebody and tell them, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. I promise you, keep saying it until it happens. I want you to save up, listen to me, I want you to save up the money on your next flight and get a first class ticket. Because once you sit up there, you ain't going to want to go back there no more. So I want you to introduce yourself to the next level so you become disgusted with the one you're comfortable with. I want you to go in neighborhoods you can't afford to live in, bring your Yorkie so they don't shoot you and act like you belong. Just get you some spandex and a nice shirt. Act like you're just jogging. Act like you belong out there. If your car is raggedy, park it up the street and walk in. I want you to get used to walking in neighborhoods with grass and trees and, and people holding hands and jogging. And park. I want you to, you got to get your mind ready for it. Spirit of the living God, we have exhausted ourselves at this altar to prove to you that we're willing to wait for you to work. I believe that this is an uncommon moment, God, where a majority, if not, of, if not all of us in this room are on the same accord, desiring to be what you created us to be, preparing for the opportunity to interpret the dreams of the King and to become an unusual suspect and shock the world that we became in spite of the odds being stacked up against us. We speak life, health, wealth, freedom, institutional authority, political power. Show us the secrets of the kings. Put our name on somebody's mind. And when we shall overcome, we will direct the praise right back to you. In Jesus' name, everybody who loves them shout hallelujah. Shout I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. And this is the month of my promotion. If you believe it, shout yes. Hug somebody on your way out, tell them I love you, ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you.